I want to address the problem Sam Harris has with free will. And there are good reasons to think about free will. But free will is a goal-seeking algorithm. So anytime you think about a human behavior, we are thinking about an algorithm. We're thinking about what is motivating that behavior. What are the motivational factors in that behavior? Now, Sam Harris, for some reason, seems stuck on the idea, well, we, we can't have free will is predestined. Well, sure, there is a limit to the behavior that someone is going to exhibit because their goals aren't going to be outside that limit. So let me just give you an example. Um, now, and there's two examples I want to do. Now, the extreme example I was going to use was the idea of a computer screen. There is a limit to the number of images that can be displayed on that computer screen. Some people say, well, it's an infinite number of pictures. Well, actually, it's a finite number of pictures, but it's so huge that it's ridiculous to talk about those limits, what kind of image you can display on that screen. But there is a limit. There is a mathematical limit, and it's definable. It's not infinite. It's huge, and huge doesn't really even begin to tell you how huge it is. It's an absolutely astronomical number. So it's not useful in any practical sense to say, well, it's it's constrained. Yes, it is constrained by the the monitor constrains the images that can be displayed on that screen. That's true. So in that sense, he's correct. It is our behavior is limited by the constraints of our mind. And we are not free to violate the constraints of our mind or the the constraints implied by physics. But it doesn't really help us understand free will. Free will is a goal-seeking algorithm. And the goal of free will is to simply to avoid being trapped. And you can see it in action when you see people talk about free will. They are trying to avoid any kind of trap that Sam is trying to set for them, what he's trying to set for them. And you can see Dan Devon getting frustrated with that, trying to break free of traps, trying to find a way to say, I am free. I can make free decisions. That is the algorithm in action. Actually, he is attempting to find an argument that will persuade Sam Harris out of his position. Now, what I would say on this is it's not useful to think about free will as being um, predetermined. It is true that your brain makes the decision before you are consciously aware of it, but that's irrelevant because it's still part of your brain. It's still a part of your goal-seeking algorithm, which is to be free, to make free decisions, to be able to achieve your goals. And when you look at a compinging variable, such as you know a tumor is one of the ones he classically uses. Someone has a tumor and has a behavior that is... Uh, non-traditionally a part of their character, meaning would they behave the same way if they didn't have a, have a tumor? And the answer is no. So it's impinging on what we would consider a normal um, free will, so a normal behave behavior. And really you say, does that behavior help that person in achieving their goals? So in free will, what we might want to look at is what we're concerned with is not that someone is um, completely free, but that they are working in their best interest. Now, from a moral standpoint, this is an important question, and this is why Sam Harris gets upon it. It's what, what, as a society, should we do to help people make good decisions? And we can look at this in two ways. What should we do, or what should we try to optimize for? Now, I would argue that we should try to optimize for such that people that are behaving in their best interest are in the best interest of society, such that we optimize for the individual. Because if individuals are acting in their best interest, 
and that is in the best interest of society, society will be as free as it possibly can be. Now, there are things, human behaviors that aren't considered optimal, and we ignore these human behaviors in general. We can point them out, but we use their own, the own free will of the individual to make the determination of what they want to do based upon the feedback they get from the environment. Okay, let me use, use an example. Smoking it has negative consequences to your health. Now, people don't talk about the positive aspects of smoking, and I'm not going to talk about the positive aspects of smoking here. Smokers know what those positive aspects are if they think about it. So they need to weigh the positive with the negative, right? A, a behavior they kind of picked up because it was cool, whatever reason they picked up the behavior, now they need to make a decision. They know they are physically addicted to this chemical. They know the potential negative consequences. Sure, there's examples of people living into their 90s as smokers, but there's a lot of evidence to say that they are impinging upon other freedoms in their lives by continuing to choose to smoke. Now, we could force people to stop smoking, but we would be denying their free will. We would be saying, look, dude, you are never going to learn how to uh, smoke anymore, so we're going to need to take away your, your cig cigarettes, and you just can't get them. Okay. But by doing that, we're weakening their ability to make free choices. We're impinging upon that ability. So, in that instance, what we are doing, we value, we are saying we value your free will. Not because it's entirely free, but because we know it is the, it is the best tool for maximizing the benefits of all societies. Now, there's a couple problems, more than a few problems with that, but I'm using the assumption that as a society, we want to optimize for individual free will. Um, and if it's in the best interest of individual free will, then this would be the path we want to take in terms of helping someone not smoke because it empowers their own mechanisms for making change. It empowers their decision-making architecture. Um, if we treat free will as a muscle, and that's kind of how I'm doing that in this instance, is I'm saying free will is, is like any other muscle in our body. It, it's a, an anti-fragile system that needs feedback, that, and negative as well as positive feedback in order to, to grow and mature. Um, so that's my take on free will, and I wanted to get this out. It's not complete, not a perfect um, demonstration of what I mean by free will and what the, why it's... But let me emphasize, it's, it's not that Harris is wrong, it's that he's, he's missing the more important aspects of what free will is. It is an algorithm designed to optimize, a goal-seeking algorithm to optimize for our behavior. And maybe that works. <laughs>